Hi guys, welcome! RO 2.0 has officially been launched last week and lots of new players have been asking me on what to do after the Cryptor Academy program. So in this video, I've created a beginner's guide on what you can do to level up and progress your character in the game. This includes up-to-date information on daily tasks, farming preparation, farming spots, and other game features you need to know. Hopefully, with this guide, you can develop your own routine that you can easily adhere to in order to have more fun playing the game. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Usually, the first thing you can do each day is to park your main character at the music box in Southgate. Listening to CDs being played for 30 minutes will grant 30 minutes of green combat time on top of the 150 minutes you get during server reset. While waiting, you can do your assistant dailies such as completing the mission board quest 3 times, preparing Rift instantly, claiming pet labor rewards, and enhancing any equipment once. You can then go to the exchange and check the prices of materials and gears. Tracking the prices of materials daily is very important to help you decide which materials to farm for the day, which gears to buy, or which materials you can invest in. You can also check the assistant tab to see which items have significantly risen or fallen in price for the last 3 to 7 days. It's good if your character is able to adapt to the needs of the in-game economy as gaining Zenny is the heart of Ragnarok's structure and seeing your Zenny and gears develop is rather satisfying. Once you are done filling up your combat time and checking the exchange, you can continue doing other daily tasks such as donating to the guild, completing guild quests, and buying an item in Lucky Shop and Greedy Shop. Finding the Greedy Shop on your own can be often time-consuming so it's okay if you don't do that every day. You may also consider doing the pet adventure once daily if you have the pet adventure coupon from the Great Mentors license shop. Completing the assistant dailies will not only grant assistant medals, but will also grant Kafra Adventure Log EXP and some more coins for enchanting gears. Next, you can start doing the daily event activities, which are usually marked with a pink gift icon in the quest bar. However, some events are not listed in the quest bar, so make sure you stay updated by subscribing to my channel and watching my events guide videos. After finishing your dailies, you can now decide where to farm your character for the day. Aside from the highest possible Zenny profit, other factors that you should consider when choosing a farming spot are as follows. First is level gap wherein the drop rate and EXP rate changes depending on the difference in the level between your character and the monster. You'll get 100% drop rate of Zenny and Lutes if the level gap is less than or equal to 30. Hence, for a level 120 character, the most efficient monsters to farm Zenny, materials, cards, and blueprints are those which are level 90 and above. As the level gap increases, the drop rate becomes lower as shown in this table. If you want to get loots from lower level monsters, you should farm using alt characters instead which we'll discuss later. Second is Weapon Size Damage Penalty, wherein there is a damage adjustment when using a certain weapon against monsters of different sizes. You can refer to the Traveler's Notes for the Weapon Size Damage Penalty table. As an example, a hunter which uses bow weapon will deal 100% damage to small and medium sized monsters but only 75% damage to large size. Do take note that magic type classes are not affected by weapon size damage penalty. Before we proceed to the next farming tip, I'd like to introduce you to a fun casual game I've been playing when I'm done farming my characters. It's called Dragon Champions and it's a fantasy-themed turn-based mobile RPG. I'm so happy that Dragon Champions has sponsored this portion of the video. What I love about Dragon Champions is that it has engaging storylines and that the user interface is very beginner-friendly. You can start with campaigns then unlock all the other PvE and PvP features as you level up. The gameplay itself is not too hard but also not too easy which gives the right amount of challenge. In addition, the game is absolutely free-to-play friendly 
as you can unlock every hero by just completing the story levels and participating in events. My favorite hero in my team is Freezard from the Order faction. He's a powerful ice mage that can debuff and deal damage to multiple enemies. I can also develop Freezard quite easily because of the intuitive game design. I can level him up and equip gears at a push of a button. The item search function is also very handy for hunting any specific gear. Dragon Champions is constantly evolving and it's regularly updated. Developers not only add new heroes but also improve old characters so players don't get bored. If you guys would like to try Dragon Champions, just check out my links in the description box down below. As a treat for new players, developers provided us with a generous gift. Just use a promo code MISSMAVENGIFT to get a special starter pack. You'll get the Orc Mage Cochrane for free, will surely be helpful in battles with his AoE attack and stun. Just go to settings to enter the promo code MISSMAVENGIFT. Note that you'll get these extra rewards before level 15 and for the next 30 days only. Going back to our discussion, the next step is that you need to ensure that you can one-hit kill the monsters you are farming. There is no exact way of doing this as it depends on a combination of factors. You need to consider your character's stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, enchantment, weapon, and accessory enhancement as well as the attributes of the monsters you are farming. I have several guides on farming builds on my channel which can help you achieve one-hit kill on monsters. You can tweak and test those out in the field. Fourth and last is the monster spawn frequency and distribution. Some farming spots are better than others due to monsters respawning faster upon getting killed. If monsters spawn close together, using AoE and splash damage skills would be more efficient. Some of the recommended farming spots are as follows. Afterwards, you can start preparing your character for AFK farming. First, if you're already a mentor, you can use 2 Mentors Potion from the Great Mentors License Shop to receive 60 minutes of extra combat time, getting a total of 240 minutes of combat time daily. Second, make sure that your chains are activated. When Meteoric Chain is activated, you can consume 240 minutes of green combat time in just 1 hour of farming. Aside from reducing your farming time, Chains also help reduce farming costs such as the upkeep of buffs from food or the plant bottles used by alchemists. Third, you may create or join a public party if you want to utilize the group hunting adventure skill. Just make sure that there are three or more different tier 1 job classes in the party for higher efficiency. Of course, this is completely optional. Fourth, take advantage of elemental restraints to deal more damage against monsters of a particular element. This table found in the Traveler's Notes in your inventory summarizes the elemental restraints of the game. As an example, if you use a fire element attack against an earth element monster, your damage will double. You can change the element of auto attacks and some skills by using elemental converters, elemental arrows, and elemental skills. Fifth and last is to consume cooked foods and meals. The best food to increase physical damage is Satisfied Feast, while the best food to increase magic damage is Original Will Juice. An alternative for skill-based builds is Original Will Salad as it reduces cast delay. For meals, it's more cost-efficient to purchase Meal A and just use Meal B if you have food vouchers. You may also use Awakening Potion to increase the attack speed of auto-attack builds except for ninjas. As for other consumable items such as alloys and precision stones, these are rather expensive so they're not recommended for daily grinding. Just use these if you desperately need to one-hit kill the monster you are farming. Once you've prepared your chains, elemental converters, foods, and other buffs, make sure to check the skills placed in your auto skill bar. If you're going to use multiple buff skills, you can put them in prepare for elite adventure skill so that all buffs will be activated at once. Next, select which specific monsters you want to farm and don't forget to tick Protect Party which allows you to target other monsters that are attacking you. If you're farming solo, make sure that you're in a solo party for this to work. You may also hire mercenary kitty cats in your party to assist you in battle. Gara is probably the most indispensable in the party as he grants healing and SP regen. He can even resurrect you when you get killed. 
Then Wasabi can act as a tank as he can take 90% of the damage you receive. If you're playing a support character and have difficulty one-hit killing monsters, then you can hire Paul or Mesa to increase your physical or magic abilities respectively. There are also farming spots where you want to take Stay Alert. This allows you to stand still on a particular spot and only kill monsters that spawn nearby. This is practical in maps where monsters spawn constantly in clusters. After consuming all your green combat time, it will become yellow. You can still grind with the yellow combat time, but the EXP gain and drop rate will gradually decrease. And once your combat time becomes red, the drop rate will be significantly low so it's no longer efficient to grind. If you want to hunt boss monsters in the field, the drop rate is not affected by the gradual decrease rule. When your main character has finished farming, you may opt to farm your low-level alt characters. If your main character is a stellar hunter, then the most suitable alt farmer would also be a hunter since you can just transfer your main's gears to your alts. Other good options for alts that require low investment are Blacksmith, Wizard, Doram, and Hunter with Trapper build. If you're planning to play for a long time, then you can invest in an alt creator character. However, this requires a much higher investment. Lastly, let's discuss other extra things you can do to progress in the game. First, complete all wasteland activities as a Grand Time Quicksand, which is needed to upgrade your 4 job skills, and wasteland materials which are needed to upgrade your Idrasil Spirit Tree. This is currently the best place to farm base and job EXP, but the drop rate is quite low, so expect a very low Zenny income. To know the complete details of the different wasteland gameplay activities, you can check my Wasteland and Spirit Tree video guide, which I have linked in the description box down below. Second, you may also spend your time doing boss hunts to get rare materials, cards, equipment, and blueprints. All MVPs respawn every even number of clock server time, while all minis respawn every 30 minutes. Do take note of the 2R penalty when switching channels. Third, you may activate a monthly premium card which can be bought either from the recharge interface using real money or from exchange using Zenny. The advantages are, first your character will get 33% increase in drop rate when farming normal monsters. Second, there will also be an increase in base and drop EXP gained when in battle. And third, the number of times you can activate lightning chain will be unlimited. However, the cost in premium in exchange is quite steep, so make sure that you only use it when the additional income earned when in premium is greater than the cost of premium itself. Fourth, there are various quests that you can do on your leisure time. The main storyline quests marked with red exclamation point are usually quite long, but they give out decent rewards such as headgears and costume. Next, the quests marked with a golden key are very important as they unlock a game function or feature such as Oracle Mirror, Advanced Runes, and a lot more. Next, you can do two Syngra Master Box missions daily in Lighthalzen, Luyang, and at Klodge. Completing a series of quests will grant a regional headwear. And last, there are side quests marked with green exclamation point and the anecdotes which only give out little to no rewards. And lastly, there are various weekly and seasonal events, instances, and dungeons you can join to earn more generous rewards. Alright, so far we've discussed all the useful tips and tricks that you can do daily to level up and progress your character. I hope this guide was helpful in starting your journey in Ragnarok Eternal Love. Feel free to comment down below if you have questions, suggestions, or additional tips for beginners. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.